It's Adam here for PC Monitors, and this is just a quick video to introduce you to something called Color Control, which is an application I just discovered very recently. So I'm by no means an expert. This allows you to do quite a few things, but what I'm gonna focus on here is the ability to tweak HDR. I know the video title is HDR Calibration, but this is really more about just making a few changes if you're finding that HDR on your monitor just really doesn't look how you want it to look. So there's a link in the video description which will take you to this GitHub page which will allow you to download the software. It's under releases here, so just click on the latest release, whatever that happens to be when you're watching the video. You then should see assets and it should have colorcontrol.zip right at the top of that. Click on that, you can then download it. I'd recommend just copying all of whatever you've downloaded in the zip file to a separate folder so you know where it is and it's uncompressed, etc. Then you want to run colorcontrol.exe there. When you first run this, you probably have this Microsoft Defender smart screen and how this will look depends on the version of Windows you're using and how you set it up, etc. But for me, I have to press more info here, run anyway. And this is only done the first time you try and run the application. So if I open it again, it should just open up without giving me that alert. Now, this can look very overwhelming and confusing when you first run it, but you do want to be activating HDR to create your HDR profile. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And I've set this up so that I can toggle HDR on and off by pressing Control H. So I'm just going to delete that and then redo it so I can show you. So press Add, and then you can name your preset whatever you want. I'm just going to call it HDR Toggle, because that's what I want to achieve. You can unselect all of these because you're not interested in changing these. It's just the HDR you want to toggle on and off. Press OK. You can see it listed there now, HDR Toggle. There are probably various different ways to do what I'm doing here, but this is just the way I do it. Press change, HDR, you want to have it included and you want to have it set to toggle HDR. So you'll see that they're both ticked, included and toggle HDR. Then click the box next to shortcut and I'm gonna have it set to control and H and then press save. And now when I press control and H, it toggles HDR on. Press it again, control and H, toggles it off. It doesn't change any of my other settings, it's simply toggling HDR on and off. You then want to go to Options, Color Profiles, Create HDR Color Profile. There's quite a bit you can do here, which I'm not going to explore. I'm just going to focus on some basic adjustments you can make. So depending on your monitor, this will show various different things. I'm using a Kurai GP01 at the moment. It's quite a good one to use as an example because it's a very basic HDR experience, isn't very well calibrated out of the box. And I want to talk a little bit about what you can and can't change. So the thing to remember with monitors under HDR is the calibration process is quite complicated and how everything's set up is quite complicated and certainly more complicated than anything you could undo or fix, so to speak, with these kind of tweaks that I'm going to show you here. Nonetheless, it does allow you to change how things look. So if you find things look too dark, that's actually the case with this monitor, so things generally look like the gamma is too high, then you can change this from what should be 2.2. Maybe other displays would show something else here, but I think it would usually be showing 2.2. And I'm gonna make an extreme change. I'm gonna set that to 1.2. You can name it what you want. I'm just gonna leave it set to whatever it's showing you there. It's fine for me. So everything's at default, except I've changed the gamma from 2.2 to 1.2. Then press generate. The first time you do this, you might get some user account control message. Just press yes and continue, it's fine. So you should be able to see that it's made quite a difference. It's given me quite an uplift, a brighter look to things. So remember, this is just SDR. It's on the desktop, but it also does apply to HDR. And I'm just going to close this and just show you when I use my toggle, I press Control and H, it disables HDR, and it also has the default color profile set. If I press Control and H to enable HDR with my toggle, you don't have to have this open, by the way. You can have it minimized. Well, it does have to be open, but you can just minimize it to the system tray. It then goes back to my HDR profile with HDR enabled. Toggle it off again, back to where it was without the profile, without HDR. So it's all set up very nicely. It's doing what it should be. And just to give you a quick visual demonstration of the difference the profile made. So that's what it was like natively. And that's with the profile applied. So much lighter. It looks like the gamma has been reduced. Now, again, this isn't perfect because monitors have EOTF curves under HDR and even if you just look at the basic gamma, which is more of an SDR thing, 
You'll probably find that some models will have kinks in the curve at various places, but what this is doing is it's displacing the curve completely left or right, depending on the value you've selected in the program. So some shades might be too bright, others too dark still. You can't fine tune at a greater level than that with this program, but it might just be the kind of change you need. And if you want to make further tweaks, it's very easy. You can just go back to this. Let's say I find things looking quite washed out, quite flooded looking. Perhaps I want to increase gamma. And by the way, you're not likely to make the extreme changes I'm making here. This is just to make it really obvious in the video. So I'm going to change this to 3.2. So this should look really deep, yep, really deep and dark. So just to give you a reminder of what it looked like before, 2.2, like that, 1.2, like that. You get the idea. And when you're running most HDR content, it'll have the same kind of thing going for you. Another tweak you could make is change the color gamut here. Should be set to native by default. Perhaps that would depend on your monitor model. If you select sRGB here, it will give more of a sort of faded look to things, or it should. P3, it really depends on the native gamut of your monitor. It could make some shades look less saturated or some more depending on the monitor. Same with Rec 2020, but even further. This might increase saturation if that's what you want to do. Adobe RGB, well, it could make things look a bit funky under HDR. Just be aware that you're not increasing the color gamut with these options, so that the most saturated shades aren't going to become any more saturated and you're not going to be able to achieve supreme saturation by doing this. But it's still something you can tweak if you want. If you're finding these color gamut options aren't working for you and you're not getting the kind of balance you want, you could try using NVIDIA Digital Vibrance instead. Just be aware that if you're increasing saturation there, it's quite a clumsy adjustment and it's going to crush your shade variety a lot. It might not be so noticeable with a small adjustment, but with larger adjustments and an increase, it will be. And decreasing it, again, large adjustments can be problematic and it can be difficult to balance things, but it could work if you're just finding things too saturated, perhaps with a certain HDR preset on your monitor. You like everything else about that preset, you just want to decrease that a bit. Then you could just decrease NVIDIA's digital vibrance a bit. So I'm just going to show you HDR content just to show you the difference it makes in HDR content. My gamma is set to 1.2 because I decided things look too deep, too dark, and I've set my color gamma to Rec 2020 as I've decided things were too undersaturated somehow as well. So I'm just running a game under HDR, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, just to show you roughly what this does or the kind of change it can make. So on this monitor, natively, the HDR just looks really dark, like the gamma is too high, so I would want to try and reduce the gamma. So I can change it in the profile to 1.2. And you can see that has indeed lightened things up significantly. That's not to say things are perfectly balanced. Some things are clearly brightened up too much. Other things are about right. That's really the problem. It's displacing the curve, remember. It isn't granular enough to fix different bits of the curve. And let's see what happens if I add in Rec 2020 for my color gamut. That did increase the saturation. I'm not sure if that would come across on the video, but it has boosted the saturation up, particularly for the vegetation here. Some of it looks kind of oversaturated. Remember, that's really what this is about. It's about tweaking the monitor. You're not actually calibrating. The process for that is far more complex. I'm actually going to link to a thread in the description of the video which talks a bit about HDR calibration. It is a bit complicated. And also be aware that mini LED monitors, for example, they will have various different local dimming algorithms, which means that the EOTF curve, so the sort of gamma tracking under HDR, if you like, that is affected by the content being displayed. OLED's the same thing because they have an ABL automatic brightness limiter. This monitor is a bit simpler because it just has a single backlight, which is controlled all as one single unit. But the calibration was quite off and I would say that overall things have improved just with these little tweaks I've made just with that application there. So yes, really I'm just trying to raise awareness of the colour control application, something for you to have a play with yourself, see if you find it useful.